terribly much in that last game. Yep, and Lira, of course, doing a lot of that too with his explosive cast, making those fights yeah. a lot more favored. I mean, we saw this yesterday too. The Mickey highlights ended up being also Lira highlights at the same time. Kicking things off, Gragas ban coming out from Anarchy this time on the blue side. So same ban set in NAR for CJ and is, are they going to ban that LeBlanc or perhaps give it up as a first pick? There's the Shivana once again. Callista still available. That would be a dangerous pick to hand over to Song Yun and it will be banned, but that means that LeBlanc is available. Now Anarchy who has first pick Thresh in this situation previously, but they are going to prioritize the Maokai. All right, even shutting that option down. Are they gonna take the LeBlanc here then because they took out the Maokai? Oftentimes, Maokai selected not only against double AP, but against assassins in general. Pretty tanky guy, especially against AP. This does open up the LeBlanc pick quite a bit for Mickey if he chooses to try to style on CJ Entis with one of his main assassins. Yeah, Shivana covered over right now, maybe looking for that. Gragas has been banned out this game, so yeah, Lyra Shivana. taking it last time, but they didn't want to first pick it in this particular match. Interesting. Yeah, well, I think, I wonder if they really were trying to either prioritize the top lane or trying to see what would happen to the little blob and gauge that out. Uh, also, if you're not going to first pick the jungler in general, I mean, Rek'Sai is pretty annoying too, but Gragas does have a lot more options to create unexpected fights. I'm surprised they aren't going to go for the Rek'Sai here yeah. just because taking the Rek'Sai is pretty darn important uh, if you want to deal with some of these skirmishes. If you take the Sichuana, you're going to be farming early, and that is a team fighting champion, and... Frankly, CJ Andes was not prepared to teamfight in that last no. game whatsoever. So I'd rather have the Rek side try and make some plays on the map early, but that may go over to Lyra. Now Madlife will be getting the Thresh this time around, trying to take that away from Snowflower. It's going to be Evelyn again for Lyra. Some good play from him yesterday on Evelyn. Yeah, and he did get ahead because he got four kills in the early game, <laughs> went for the Warrior Enchant, and ended up being sufficiently tanky in the end. But you're gonna much rather have a Sejuani in the late game than an Evelyn. So you Absolutely. really, there's a there's a very big timing window we hear where you have to make a lot happen early. Otherwise, you're going to be far worse than most other junglers in this patch. There's the Alistair pickup as well. And there's still the possibility of an Alistair Urgot lane coming in if they want it. Mickey saving off his pick for this last round of the draft on blue side. Meanwhile, Shy may be going for that rumble and the Sivir this time coming over for Space. Part of it taking away from Sang Yoon, who had some good play, but of course, Space in general, a pretty good Sivir player. I can't help but think Anarchy setting everything else up for themselves for a LeBlanc pick here with the Alistar and Maokai taken away from CJ. Well, CJ is set up for some pretty strong mid-game play here, but they're really gonna have to be much more on point in terms of that teleport and making sure they group up for these early dragons. They have a lot of mid-game power, but they need to be able to use it properly. Great team fight coming in from CJ Entis so far. Anarchy maybe taking the counter pick of the Lucian in lane. Haven't seen Graves in a little bit here. Yeah, well, all three of those pretty versatile. Of course, Lucian and Ezra a little bit more so than Graves. Graves does have a very distinct strong point and a weak point. The problem with playing Graves into Sivir is you can just spell shield Buckshot and yeah. then he's standing there at zero range, <laughs> kind of taking auto attacks right to the face and getting ricocheted. So not exactly ideal, but we'll see if this Ezreal gets locked in instead alongside the LeBlanc. Pretty safe pick, high mobility to deal with the AOE damage from Rumble and from this Sejuani. So it will be the Ezreal lock for Song Yun. Pretty safe lane right there. Ezreal, yeah, no. Alistair, difficult to dive and uh, difficult to lock down in team fights. And there's the LeBlanc as well from Mickey, the only champion that he has lost on so far. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's quite the stat. Of course, uh, Coco was known for his Cassidy before Cassidy can trade with LeBlanc pretty efficiently, as we saw yesterday in lane. Yeah, the, the Kassadin right now, we saw how well Goom did against Mickey in that lane matchup. He has to expect this is going to happen again because we know that Coco is a long-time Kassadin player. So, could play the Jace, though. Yeah, I, in some ways I prefer this just because if you go with Kassadin and, and Rumble, I mean, you're dealing with an Alistair and Maokai on the other side. Not quite sure how much you, know, you can do there. You'd have to target the Ezreal, but Ezreal's going to be just as slippery. I haven't seen Coco play Jace since the beginning of the spring season, but he is the Korean sniper. He is extremely good on Jace, but 
I'll have to be a little bit careful right here, see what he can do in the early game. And this is a long range backline assassination comp as well with the Rumble and the Jace. Of course, CJ has been known to run these double AD compositions. It just hasn't happened in a few months. Yeah, we'll see how well they do again. I mean, they are relying a lot on teamwork once again to make anything happen, though, with the Sejuani, Rumble, and Jace. I mean, Jace can duel a little bit, but at the end of the day, when it goes over 30 minutes, you're going to rely more on your team fight presence than anything. So Anarchy's running a composition that needs to make picks. They're not going to be able to out team fight what CJ Antis is throwing out the, at them, especially in the mid game. But they have a lot of mobility, a lot of surprise factors. They can come over walls to create picks and a lot of setup for the CC. So Anarchy is going to have to play with vision this game, get some picks before they get onto objectives. Because if CJ actually manages to get group on an objective before one of them is picked off, Anarchy is not going to have a lot of chance unless they have a very large gold lead. Very true. CJ, can they bring it back? Anarchy is leading 1-0 after their upset win against Najin yesterday. Can they continue that trend and hold on to the first place here in Champion Summer? Or will CJ just fight back to take it to a third game and the last game of the day? Find out as game two starts to load in. Anarchy with Mickey coming back for the LeBlanc. He wants a win on his signature champion. Let's get right into it, guys. Game number two between Anarchy and CJ Entis. Summoner's Rift. I feel like the Anarchy fans are getting louder and louder after every win. They feed off of the tears of the Korean pros. Well, I wonder, given how good Lyra is, <laughs> CJ. <laughs> well, we might as well go to the last game now. <laughs> given how well Lyra and Mickey have done, I wonder how good deft would be if he came back to Korea at this point. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> the return exodus of Korean players. It's actually, Samsung actually just dispersed into China to grow even stronger. It's, it's the double agent plan. Uh, you, you send them there for a season, and then you reunite all the Dragon Balls back in Korea, and that just lights out from there. And they still have to take a win away from SKT and MSI. I mean, that's a pretty scary thought. All right, so uh, CJ also relying quite a bit on Coco. So yeah, that ward right there is just because they're trying to make sure that Maokai isn't stacking saplings at Raptors. Instead, Maokai will be stacking saplings at Wolves. And Coco's sitting there to see if he can get a shock blast to maybe take away some of these saplings, if that's what's going to happen. But that is not what's going to happen. But still a nice little ward trick right there. I like Coco's positioning. Might as well set yourself up for some kind of advantage. And Anarchy. We'll be going for that red buff first. Space and Mad Life not going to be taking Gromp instead heading into lane. I think they're expecting a lane swap right here, but they're not going to get it. Yeah. And start freezing the lane. Yeah, so Shy will just leash and not follow the jungle around. He will go right into lane two after noticing that the lane swap probably not going to happen. Lyra doesn't have a lot of great opportunities for ganking, but again, remember Anarchy's, Anarchy's style has been relying on hard CC in the side lanes. And they have that Maokai and they have that Alistair. So that's probably where he's going to be looking as we see level two gank coming out onto Coco. Coco has barrier and flash, so, so this is not going to be easy. Yeah. I think he's just going to have to back off of this one. Yeah, Lyra may be looking to blow a flash from Coco to make things a little bit easier for Mickey to trade. Oh, he is going to find a chance here. They're going in, get some damage in, and they will get the flash as Mickey lands his chain. Yeah, more and more level two ganks. You saw so many of them when you yeah. were casting the qualifiers. That's nonstop. Yeah, it's it's that kind of cheese is making a little bit of a return. We saw some of them yesterday as well. So time for Prey to come back with the Twitch <laughs> level two ganks. Take red first and then go <laughs> go into the mid lane as Twitch. Yes, that is the, the Nodge and Sword special back in the day. <laughs> Dealing with that kind of stuff must tilt you so hard too. <laughs> yeah, if you see Prey show up on with a red buff, you're like, really? <laughs> dirty, dirty cheese. <laughs> well, successful gank to kick things off for Lyra, so that's pretty good news. And Ixu going down the river just to see 
you know, if you can scout any extra information, also to prevent Ambition from perhaps coming all the way to the top lane before they see him. As yeah. he did have a nice push in top lane. Ambition just waiting right there, making sure that Jace isn't going to overextend. Ambition doesn't have any pink wards to help out around this mid lane quite yet. Going back and just picking up a Trailblazer, so he's making up for it by having a little bit of presence in this situation. And Lyra's back. Oh, the flash at the chain. He's going to get snared. No flash left for Coco. He does still have the barrier, and he's going to have to pop it. Nice aggression, though. Mickey making an attempt right there. No Sejuani in order to come back in. So they get the other summoner spell at the cost of two, but they get the recall as well. And Lyra still has flash if he needs it. Smart of him to hold it right there, though, knowing yeah. the barrier was going to come up and that there wasn't going to be an opportunity to finish off that gank. Really well done by Lyra. Lyra also got the crab, the scuttle crab in top side, so Ixu's gonna be safe without any help there. And Mickey's still got some opportunities after he comes back. I mean, Coco doesn't really have too much damage right now, and he's gonna wanna build up that tier anyway in mid lane. So Coco will have to watch out. Meanwhile, Shy really low after some miscalculated trades, it seems. Wow, and this is a really late tier as well on Nakoko. Yeah. Having to recall twice already in this situation is really quite poor for him. You can see him falling behind in terms of CS, and he's going to have to recall again if he wants that tier. So we'll keep a track of that and see when he gets it, but it's going to be delayed, and it's a tough decision about how delayed it's going to be because, of course, he wants to stay in lane and get the wave in the right place, but the longer he waits, the less stacks he's going to have, and the slower he'll get that Muramana, so tough decision coming from Coco. Yeah, either way, you're going to have to lose out on one thing or another, and the rest of his team will have to try to make up for it whether it's by a gank or the side lanes growing. So he's just trying to burst down the wave quickly and then going back, he will find a small window here to do so. Ambition being spotted, he will try to clear out that pick. I'm yeah, he, scared of <laughs> he can't do that right now, he has no idea. I mean, look at CJ Andes, they have no wards on the camp right now. They have zero clue where this Evelyn could be. Ambition going after, this is so dangerous. Oh, he gets caught by Snowflower. Lyra chasing up, will Ambition have to blow his flash? Looks Nope, he is just going to back out. The Scuttle Crab still goes in favor of Ambition. I think they were a little bit worried about where Mad Life was right there because he had just recalled, but could have been walking through his own jungle by the same token. So had the speed trying at the very least as well to escape, and they get some deep wards in for their wow. trouble, but no overcommitment there from Anarchy. And again, how impressive is it that Anarchy has this level of warding as this brand new amateur team? This is really, really good vision control that they've had in every single one of their games. And flash down for Shy, so Anarchy looking for a gank up top. No level six for Lyra though, so they are missing out on that extra crowd control. Yeah, unlikely this is gonna work with Equalizer still up, even with flash down for Shy. He's close enough to his turret with that ultimate. Yeah. That you're not gonna be able to find much there, and you're not gonna wanna dive quite yet. Or you can open up with the Evelyn ultimate. Instead, Mad Life going to come down here walk by several wards. Yeah, so much information being given over to Anarchy. And like you said, they really seem to know how to take advantage of any situation, what advantages they have available to them, whether it's vision, objectives, or kills. And Ambition does clear the ward on blue buff, but still quite a few, a couple left in the deep side of the blue side jungle. Just farming in the bottom side, Song Yu and Stofla are perfectly happy holding back with their very defensive, dive-proof bottom lane, stacking up that tier. And no more trouble for Coco right now, but he does fall, find himself falling a little bit behind in terms of CS, but very subtle advantage in terms of gold so far to Anarchy. And Shy trying to play defensively up against this Maokai. No MR yet on Ixu, just a lot of potions. Yeah, just trying to stay in that lane long as possible. Chai actually going for a Negatron Cloak first, so prioritizing an Abyssal Scepter. That's a very defensive build onto Rumble. Yeah. Oh, nice hits oh. onto Sangyu, and that's pretty dangerous. He is going to have to... Yeah, so there's a difference. There. Space, a much better Sivir player than a Vayne player. <laughs> <laughs> nice harass from Mickey onto Coco, and then jumping right back to his Distortion at the last minute, getting maximum damage and safety that mid lane. Ambition looking for a gank. Ambition has his ultimate, but not going to happen. Coco also so low that you might actually end up trading even with the barrier. 
so Ambition not going to make a risky move there. Not going to be seen in the mid lane either until he crosses over to this ward on his bottom side. Like Mickey just wants to go ahead, take his blue buff right there. Not too, too much. Space with the BF sword, so a pretty big advantage in the bottom lane, at least in terms of these trades. One of the reasons why Song Yoon got hit so low, but the Snowflower there, and it's constantly healing up his AD carry. Not too great of a threat. So right now, CJ should be focusing on just trying to chip this bottom turret as much as they can, force that true shot barrage to be used on the wave clear, and really punish this tier build by having some strong attack onto the turret. But Mad Life, Whoa. oh, nice. Nice hit from space. Does take a tower hit, though. Not intended. Snowflower was trying to get some rest. Oh, Sang Yoon. He didn't get hit by the return of the Boomerang Blade, but that could have been pretty dangerous with Mad Life showing up back in lane. Of course, Anarchy does have Lyra there. The Krugs for some backup. And Mickey continuing to harass, but Coco starting to, you know, stay even and far once he got his tier. And no roams yet from Mickey either. He's been pushing quite frequently, but focusing most of his attention simply on chunking out Coco while he's trying to stack this tier instead of going for something else. Coco also, it's like he, oh. Uh oh, bottom lane, Lyra is here. Nice knockup, but it's gonna get spell shield. The space gets knocked backwards, so there's ultimate for Evelyn. Nice lantern from Mad Life. True shot barrage, not nearly enough. Uh, to take out space. Getting him down to about 50 HP. In the meantime, Coco going to take this opportunity to deal some damage to Mickey. Oop, Shock Blast <laughs> not going to land in the end. Ambition here. Pink Ward on the side. Let's see if Lyra's coming. So that does force a recall, however, and a lot of summoners burned. And Coco baiting oh. a fight, and here comes Ambition. Hasn't used his ultimate just yet, so they're just going to back out. Yeah, uh, Mickey actually didn't have his ult up oh, right there. Wow. He could have been taken out uh, had Ambition actually pulled the trigger. Yeah, it looked like maybe CJ was trying to just bait out the flash and then take the tower, but Mickey being very patient and not using the flash until he saw an animation coming out yeah. from the Sidwani. And look at, looking at this flat or looking at this, wow, Lyra Ooh, gets nice grabbed. Nice hook from Mad Life. Lyra is just going to go down with no chance of escape there. Lyra assuming that CJ was going to back out, trying to clear the wave. Got caught unawares. Here we go, transitioning immediately into the Dragon 2. Great idea while the enemy jungler is down, and uh, CJ hardly taking any damage from that, so mid tower immediately into Dragon. Much more clean play from CJ Antis than we saw in the last one. And just that couple little mistakes right there are gonna cost a lot. Mickey tries to come in, deals some damage with the Sigil onto Mad Life, doubling that one up, but not a whole lot. And Mad Life, I really like the call that we saw right there. Just push the push the little block off the tower, go ahead, take that advantage, and then get the catch onto Lyra as well. Yeah, like you said, much cleaner play, the kind of play we would expect from CJ, whereas Anarchy was showing similar levels of aggression and just precision in their previous game. Uh, Anarchy's still you know, showing that whenever they can here. It's just that Lyra got caught in that tier one in mid. So far with another ward, even the bottom side. I mean, this Anarchy's constantly had wards in the bottom side jungle of CJ and this, so they've been able to read a lot of those moves. And Mixu going to walk up, and here comes Mickey. They want to make a play onto Shy. Can they get the root onto Shy? He's going to get slowed. Mixu is he going to dive? They are going to dive. Mickey taking tower damage first, though. He is taking quite a bit. He will get out of it, and eventually the kill goes over to Mickey with the Ooh, ignite. Really close, though. One more turret shot for Ixu right there. Shy actually dropped a very good equalizer onto both members. A little closer comfort, and in the end, though. The turret's going to go down into the bottom side, and so that is a net advantage for CJ Entis because they're not able to put any damage down onto the top lane turret, so CJ continues to gobble up the objectives. Yep, red and buff. And Coco gonna go ahead and take red while he's at it. Yeah, that's gonna matter a lot. Not only the Jace getting the red, but the Evelyn not having the red is gonna decrease a lot of her damage potential coming in. Yeah, look at this too. They use the absence of the mid laner to get control over the bottom side jungle for CJ. Nice cross map play overall. And they're just gonna keep shoving forward and CJ is starting to get into a very good place right now, that tier. 
On to Coco, of course, getting that first blood gold. Oh, you see Vicky that damage? Oh, takes a lot of damage, but he does get the chain on Coco. There's a knockup from Snowflower, but Coco is going to get out with the exhaust. Mad Life gets a kill onto Mickey, and CJ will turn right back onto Snowflower, the only one left for Anarchy. As he goes down, Shy picks that one up, and CJ now up four kills to one. A great ult there from Ambition as well, just closing that gap with the flash in order to pull it off and finding. So there's more elusive champions like LeBlanc on the back line. Now they're going to take the blue buff. CJ playing a little bit more seriously, I think, this time around. Yeah. And now they're going to transition straight into the top lane, cutting off Ixu's path and just allowing space to go to town with this large minion wave. And CJ transitioning really well, not leaving any room for Anarchy to try to get it margin back. And a mission will get caught, but... Oh, Ambition actually gets knocked back. He still gets the lantern at the last moment. The True Shot Barrage was almost enough, and Mad Life blocking the sapling, too, to ensure Ambition's escape. Meanwhile, Space will have to use on the hunt. Does get slowed, and there's a hook onto Mickey. Can Space tries to flash out? Is going to get hit by the chain. There's a summoner heal, but ah, Space will be left behind by CJ and just no <laughs> real chance to save him there. Well, he was trying to push that lane all the way up uh, into the next turret, to which he succeeded, but at the same time found himself a little bit caught out because Anarchy reacted immediately into the top side of the map as they respawn, just all crowding into their top side jungle. Insufficient wards up there for CJ Antis, and they end up paying for it. Still, relatively small price to pay. They did cause some CS to be lost, and. Yeah, well, also in the bottom lane too, Shy pushing that all the way up during yeah, that time. So I still think that with that turret going down as well, definitely a net win for CJ. Anarchy committed a lot of resources to that kill, and as a result, they did lose a, a pretty good chunk of CS yep. in the meantime. You know, only one kill, Mad Life did get out of there at the end, and Ambition, of course, before that. Doko now with a Brutalizer top of his mana mune. A haunting guy's now finished for Shy too after that nice push in bottom lane. All gonna be about this next dragon right now. Shy finally has that haunting guys as well as the abyssal scepter. So a lot of magic penetration coming in and really no MR yet on the side of Anarchy. Those equalizers are going to hurt a hell of a lot. Yeah. With that flat penetration right now. I mean we're talking dealing close to true damage at this point. The yeah, Anarchy has to simply not get hit by those. And they're looking for an opportunity here in bottom, trying to set something up leading into the Dragon. Ixu also here. Bottom lane, they will all get spotted by a ward. Ixu gets hooked by Mad Life. There's Ambition going in with the knockup. Ixu actually dies back in to avoid some damage and start the fight for Anarchy. They oh, nice soul from Ambition. Locks three people up, and Space will get a kill. True Shot Barrage, not enough to finish the fight. Equalizer coming in from Shy, and Coco shows up to take out Lyra. The chase trying to continue. Hook not going to connect, though. Ambition, meanwhile, chasing down Snowflower. <laughs> and there's just a nice headbutt on that Sejuani. Great setup there once again. So Mad Life actually had a great flash play in the middle of that fight as well to keep everything rolling. Coco trying to 1v1 Mickey right now. Does miss the shot glass shy. Trying to follow up, but Mickey will distort away from the Electro Harpoons. Ooh. Nice shot on to Mickey. That'll chunk him out of this dragon fight. Really nothing at all that Anarchy's going to be able to do now. Coco just finishing off the Raptors too, denying that extra buff and farm from Lyra. And the Dragon should go safely over to CJ Trusha Barrage, also on cooldown after that last fight. And they will take a 5.5k lead at 18 minutes. Much different game than game one. <laughs> yeah, they, they seem to have snapped into the gear that we thought we'd see coming into this one. And Coco, like a bit of a tough time early, but really making up for it, hitting some nice plays. I really want to see a replay of that last engagement. And now CJ Ant is finally starting to litter the map with wards, significantly better vision than they had in their last game. Yep, really well placed uh, in a grid format there at the bottom side of the map. Well, there's just no armor, there's no magic resist yet on the Anarchy whatsoever. And as this flat penetration comes in from Jason from Rumble, this is a pretty nasty power spike from CJ Antis and not really a 
good way that Anarchy can deal with this. And Mission almost gets cut out. But Mickey and Snowflower can't catch up to that Poro. Oh, half health gone from Sangyoon. Coco is starting to already hit really hard before that last whisper is finished. Ambition does get caught by Mickey, but maybe it's the other way around. Snowflower will have to delay the fight for his teammates. Coco gets hit by a true shot, but another piece of health gets chunked down from Snowflower to try to chase through. Whoa, big lantern coming in for Ambition. There's the play onto Snowflower, and Space will pick up that kill. Yeah, even through the Unbreakable Will right there, still knocking down that Alistar with relative ease, and now this big siege comes in. Great siege composition. Mickey tries to deal some damage, and oh. there's the flash for <laughs> Ambition. Not going to find the LeBlanc, though, in the end. Mickey using his ultimate just to dodge out of that one. Yep. Another attempt at a shot. But that does delay this turret from going down for a few more seconds as they wait for the next wave. Yeah, Lyra and Sang Yoon <laughs> are coming back. Mickey trying everything he can to delay and turn this into a win as he goes back in. Nice special from Space, but he still gets caught by the Twisting Advance. He's alive, but all members of CJ Group eventually goes down, and Shy also takes out Lyra. Mickey tries to go back in with another distortion. There's the equalizer. Mickey does Shy make it out of there, and he's locked in with the chain, but Sang Yu nearly going down to the burn damage. Shy is just, wow. He's just this ruthless killer right now. You know, we don't, oh! Oh! Wow, <laughs> distortion at the last moment. Coco just shy of a kill there. Wow, Shy nearly killed everyone right there. You can see how long Shy waited to use his equalizer. He wasn't going to use it on that team fight. He was going LeBlanc hunting at the end, waiting for LeBlanc to leave. But he had so many members grouped up that had faith that his team was going to take them down anyway. And Shy. True shot barrage, not going to get the red there. Shy will get it. Uh-oh, Mickey shows up to Mad Life and gets the kill. Shy in a little bit of trouble. Oh, but the snipe from Coco over the Dragon Pit. Shy doesn't have Flash. Can he get out with his shield? There's the move speed coming in. Ixu trying to chase forward with the Righteous Glory, but he gets knocked five by Coco. Shy still alive. Lyra chasing through with the Flash, and Coco putting out so much damage. There's another shield for Shy, and he's going to get out. Coco knocking Lyra back one more time to escape to safety under the tower. Now he is alone with no mana though. All right, Shy, it's time for you to use your ult. It's almost back up again, come uh -oh, back. Oh, comes back. Coco flashes out of the head, but CJ completely back in form after right. that game one. Anarchy falling apart too. I mean, they <laughs> prioritize, every time they get back up, they prioritize all of these kills instead of actually going into lane and farming. So they're losing a lot of gold in the process. They may lose this tower as well as Space has just been working away on it this entire time, so. He's blocking it with the spell shield, and he, oh, he tries to on the hunt away, but he's doing a lot of damage to Mickey. He's trying to duel him, and he gets him <laughs> with that one last hit, escaping with a sliver. And Sangyun gets caught as Here he tries to get the shot. hunt with not the true shot. It will not hit. Meanwhile, Sangyun will pay for it. Anarchy fully All right. on tilt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Anarchy, calm down. They played the objective so well last game. This time around, they're just getting a little bit crazy as they revive from death and choosing to ignore a lot of this farm or the pressure that CJ is putting on the map. I mean, to be fair with their composition, they do have to get picks. They, they, they did choose a pick comp during the draft. But even so, what a hilarious <laughs> escape from Shy right there. That was pretty <laughs> impressive. I mean, Coco doing his fair share there, taking out Mickey and also having some good knockbacks. Yeah, this uh, Leandri's pickup is so smart from Shy right now too because Everyone has been just stacking flat health, or at least Evelyn and Maokai have, without any resists right now. So the Leandri is going to be extremely effective in this particular circumstance with the flat penetration that he already has. Yeah, Glacial Shroud onto Ixu is not going to help against the Rumble. We'll hope minimally against a chase with a Brutalizer and a last whistle. Sangyu gets caught and wow, doesn't even need to Bad go Life's for the hooks play. have been so good this <laughs> game as well. The damage follow-up really good from CJ. Ambition did take quite a bit from the tower, but that's okay as Mickey oh! gets caught after he jumps in with the distortion and CJ's just gonna charge through it. Coco, just the trade coming in to flatten all of Anarchy. And Ambition's still alive. Those hooks. That was really good <laughs> against Mickey. Completely shut down the whole point of a LeBlanc, which is to jump in and out doing damage with distortion. 
Lyra's still hanging around. Maybe he's trying to look for a straggler, but he's not going to find that chance as Mad Life doesn't get hit by the trick Lyra's still here. He's going to try and <laughs> delay these recalls. Uh, oh! Oh! Uh. <laughs> Lyra got spotted at the last moment by Shy, so Mad Life trying to turn it around for another kill for space. Won't hit the hook that time, though. Okay, got to turn right onto Dragon right here. Shy does have his teleport up in case he's needed, trying to get some of that farm onto the top side before he does, though. And nice defensive warding again here from Anarchy. That's been something that's been consistent throughout this entire game. Go ahead, get those pink wards in. See, they need those to win this game. They have to make a pick. And they have to hope that CJ is going to try and walk in there when they don't have a large amount of vision. Anarchy charging up right now, trying to get this mid turret while it's relatively undefended. They're going to take some damage. Oh, man. Here we go. CJ tries to turn it around after a nice snipe by Coco, but space is pretty low. There's a summoner to heal, and the hook not going to hit from Bad Life. Ixing gets drawn back with the play, though, and Coco will pick that up as Anarchy goes a little too deep. There's the equalizer on to Mickey. Mickey goes down, and Shy coming in from the side. The Monster Rumble gets a double kill and an ace for CJ Entis. Wow. Shai's Rumble ults have been so good this game. Wow. And there's the surrender. <laughs> I mean, it was nearly over anyway, so. Yeah, 14k lead at 24 minutes. And it wasn't going to stop there. CJ with a completely different game in game number two showing us what most people would have expected <laughs> from the team that many <laughs> thought was number two after the end of the spring season. Yeah. I think that a little bit of a wake-up call in that first one. That they're not going to be able to style on them. They have to at least play Anarchy seriously, and Anarchy did have some nice moves in the early game, but unfortunately, uh, you can't really do a whole lot with this LeBlanc, or the uh, not the LeBlanc, the Evelyn late if there's a team.